Okay, what we need is a miracle. Thank you, Mike and the mechanics, because we're continuing on our miracle journey dealing with valve sealing and internal combustion engines. Video number seven, basic valve job, BJ for short. Everyone needs to know about BJs. Okay, so one, first thing, how do you know that an engine needs one? Okay, you can have all kinds of symptoms like loss of power, smoking out the tailpipe. There are numerous causes, but is it the valves? Well, there's one way to find out if you need a valve job, and that is you test the sealing of the valves in situ. That means that with the engine completely assembled for the most part, you find your spark plugs, our spark plug, like on a lawnmower, you unscrew the spark plug and you screw in an inexpensive little fitting that matches the spark plug threads. And on the other end, it's got a female thread that you can put an air chuck into. You can take shop air, drag it over from the compressor, plug it in, charge that cylinder with pressurized air. Now, the secret to this is you got to have the piston on top dead center, both valves closed, or bottom dead center, which I prefer because the rings seal better down at the bottom because it's rounder, less wear. Then if it's at the bottom, if it's a overhead valve engine with rocker arms, you just release the rocker arms and it'll seal, and then you're sealing totally on the valves themselves. Okay, now if it's overhead cam, you have to do it at uh, top dead center because unless you'd have to take the cam out to relieve the uh, springs and and valves being open at bottom dead center. So, without testing and numbers, we're just a bunch of people with opinions. Doesn't matter what your cousin thinks, what you think, what your mother thinks, it doesn't matter. You gotta have a number. Okay, so test the ceiling in situ. Now, I said you need a number. Um, sort of. Some testers have pressure gauges called differential pressure gauges. They're the best. We'll I'll illustrate them on down the road on an actual engine, not in this video, but in subsequent ones. But if you've got the cylinder all charged up with air down here, all you have to do is get a short piece of tubing, insert it. Here I'm doing it directly into the head, but the exhaust pipe will do the same thing. Stick it in the exhaust pipe, whoop, and listen, guess what? If that exhaust valve's leaking, you will hear this. If it's not leaking, you might hear and it's somewhere else that's leaking. Well, guess what? Go around, find the carburetor inlet, stick the hose in, open up the throttle so the butterfly's out of the way, listen. <laughs> that was leaking. Okay, there we go. We can evaluate it quickly by just listening to the rush of air past the closed exhaust valve, if it is, because what's our target? Airtight. If you've got a rush of air past the exhaust valve in a closed position, you need a BJ. Just that simple. Okay. Whew. So you've tested the ceiling. Now, then this thing you do, you, you disassemble and clean. What you're going to have on your valves, you're going to have carbon and combustion crude, and you want to clean that off. And you want to clean it off gently. Because the last thing you want to do on these precision machine sealing areas is to scratch them, cut them, damage them in any way by over aggressive cleaning on a powered steel wire brush. I use a soft bristle brass brush myself and scotch bright pads with the oil. That takes away the combustion crud. Then you can look and see what you have. Now, the heart of good valve sealing. The foundation, the heart and soul, is the valve guide represented here. This is this pressed in insert that has a bore that matches the stem and it guides as the valve moves open and close it guides it to the same spot. Now what happens over time is there's a rocket motion from either a rocker or a camshaft pushing this valve open and there's a vector, a side vector on this that creates side loading so what happens is the guide itself eventually will wear oblong rather than round. 
so it will valve actually you can put it in and you can feel it tilt this way you try to tilt it 90 degrees from that axis won't, it won't tilt so that means you have a worn out guide the valve guides must be either repaired or replaced there is a repair called neuralizing <laughs> it, uh, it's short term this way knock them out I'll actually have a machine shop press them out gently and don't mess the bores up and put in new ones and size them it's just that simple they're relatively inexpensive in the great scheme of things and it's critical you do this at this stage and it's critical because guess what if your next stage is to check the sealing areas for pitting and trenching and damage and if you, they have to be remachined or replaced, you need a nice, accurate valve guide because you're going to have to do cutting and grinding to reestablish those contact areas. And if you got a worn out guide, well then the guide spindle, which is inserted into the valve guide, and the cutting tool will go down and rest on the seat and start cutting. If the spindle is allowing the cutting tube to tilt like the valve was tilting, you are screwed, dude. You will have a crap of a valve job. You'll be probably worse off than you were. Okay, so good valve guide equals good uh, resurfacing if you need it. So, how do you see if you need resurfacing? Okay, here I have a representation of an intake valve side. Intake valves run cooler. They often have light speckling from maybe a little bit of pitting and corrosion or deposit buildup. It's usually very minor. Exhaust, on the other hand, can often have very deep pitting, even trenching to where the valve was opened here and exhaust plasma just blew right through there. And also the seat can be eroded, so you have to evaluate your condition. And you're going to find you're in one of three stages. One, you're going to need to replace parts because the pitting or the trenching is just too severe. By the time you ground this out, you'd have a sharp edge. That's no good. Better off just to buy a new exhaust valve. Same with the seat. If the seat is too damaged, it's going to have to be replaced. That's a job for a machine shop, by the way. Don't even think about it. Okay, now, then, but if it's just normal light wear and tear, you can blue the parts, that means the uh, ceiling areas, with bluing. Now what I use is, we used to call it Prussian blue for marking parts in the machine shop, scribing lines for machining. But guess what? The modern uh, Sharpie pen with permanent uh, indelible markers work really well. I take this thing and I make it blue, the ceiling area, all the way around, do the same thing on the seat, insert the valve in, Press on it, squeeze it back and forth, and see where the the blue dye rubs off. That's your contact trail. If it, if it doesn't want it to um, reveal itself quite well, you might put a light dab of very fine lapping compound to cut through it, but you want to reveal that trace to make sure you have an even band all the way around that's centered in the, uh, or, near, or, or is concentric with the sealing area, not off to one side. You'll find out that in trying to seal valves that if you've got something creating an oval like a tilting valve or a crooked seat, well, ovals and circles don't seal real perfect against one another, do they? The geometry just does not allow it. So, you evaluate what to do, replace parts, resurface the parts, and resurfacing means cutting or grinding. We'll go over that hardware in a subsequent video. Or maybe you just need a little lapping only where you take a very fine paste you dab it on here, you insert the valve, you twist it back and forth in a prescribed manner, and that cuts away all the little varnish and combustion products, and you have a nice fresh surface. Now, and you want to bring that surface, you lap it to an RA of 10 or better, meaning a lower number than 10, no worse than that. And that's what you need to get a good seal, and before you put everything back together, guess what you need to do? You need to bench test it. Otherwise, you put the thing together and you charge up the cylinder and test it then. You've done all of that work and you listen with your little hose. Oh, gosh, it's not sealing it. So you have to take all that apart. So you need a way to test it on the bench. Now, 
If you do this kind of crap all the time, like an automotive machine shop, they generally have a vacuum tester that they've either built themselves or they bought from commercial tool suppliers. And basically what it does is you have a cylinder head, you insert the valve, you go around to the port, they usually have a rubber bung that will stick in there and seal pretty good, and they turn on a vacuum pump, usually made out of some kind of uh, vacuum cleaner, and there's a gauge there. And whoop, so it screams and it's pulling the vacuum. Now, if the gauge goes all the way over to 100%, guess what? You don't have an air leak. If the gauge goes to 90%, you're leaking 10%. Ah, and they can do that. It's dry, non-messy, and they can quickly go by just moving the bung from one port to another, and they can check a cylinder head quickly, efficiently, make money. Okay, now for the guys and girls and myself, because I'm cheap, I don't want to go to all that trouble to build a machine like that. I do it the old-fashioned aircraft way, and that is... With the valve installed, sometimes with a very light spring, hold it, guess what it'll do? We will pour gasoline, I will pour gasoline into this, enough to cover the valve by at least an inch, inch and a half. And then I set it resting and I wait. If it'll hold that gasoline for two minutes without leaking and dripping, good to go. Gasoline has very low viscosity. Water doesn't work, by the way. You want to use gasoline because of its low viscosity, it will find a way and wick through that joint. And after two minutes, it's dry, you're just as good as that vacuum test, guarantee you. Okay, so that's a quick overview of a basic valve job. Go back and do your projects. Next time around, we're going to talk about a non-basic valve job, high-performance valve job. All right, looking forward to it. See you then.